Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Pac-Man World 2. Last time, we swam in Pac-Dot-Pond, which has some of the most relaxing music I've ever heard in a video game. Only to have that relaxation promptly broken by Blinky's Killer Frog, the first boss in the first world that I had no business having as much trouble as I did. That was... <laughs> it was kind of sad. It was, a, it was really sad watching me fail mechanics that we learned in level, technically level zero. This time, we're moving into probably my favorite world, Bedoing Woods, and I hope that my positioning on this level tile is not indicative of how well I'm going to be doing in these levels. <sighs> Listen to that music. Listen to it. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Oh, it's it's so adventurous. It's so exciting. It's so happy. I love it. But bounce on the beetle wings to launch high into the air. You remember how that first world didn't really have anything groundbreaking? Like, it it was teaching us how to play. And I guess the groundbreaking thing for the time were the uh, the pack dot trails because that's not something that was ever seen before. Yeah, forget that. Forget about the first world having very few hazards, very few bottomless pits. This world is nothing but bottomless pits. And we're going to be playing with death the entire time. These bee doings are the principal mechanic of these woods. They're so cool. They they changed the game. They're making it they're turning it from a platformer to a like a skydiver, which I I didn't even know was an archetype of game I could play. We're already be doing in, we're already like three times the height that we've ever been. It's so cool. It's so cool. And already they introduced one mechanic. Now it's time for them to introduce another one. Directional be doings. Can you guess what they do? I should hope so because if not, I have con some concerns for you. Oh, this is kind of crazy. We are sort. Can I get that life? This is a dumb question. These are dumb questions I'm asking right now. Ah! Uh, ho, 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 ho! Get up! Get up on the thing! Get up on the thing! Wait, now I... Okay, the camera kind of changed in a weird way. I'm now going down. I mean, this is the, this is the correct way. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna land on this. Hope the camera changes. Oh, that works. That works. Okay. I can deal with that. Okay, we have a blue button here. Uh, we can't press it right now, but later we might find out what that does. For now, let's just remember that it's at the beginning of this tree. And, thank goodness, the camera controls for us, because this would be a nightmare. One of the, the flaws, I guess, of the camera, uh, more so than just being kind of janky at times, is it tends to get stuck on solid objects, which is something that I always loved uh, the workaround in Mario Sunshine, where the camera goes inside, and it looks like you're like looking through a scope or something. Also, that tree's floating over there. That's kind of weird. But here, th thankfully, the camera kind of auto-scrolls around the tree, so we're not going to be having any problems with the camera, and I definitely did not jinx it by saying that. Okay, some careful platforming here, which is such a stark contrast to Last World. I mean, the Last World was understandably simple. It was a tutorial world, but Man, did they ramp up the difficulty fast. It, it just goes from, okay, you're going to have some swimming, maybe some enemies which will deal some damage to you, to there are bottomless pits everywhere. Everything insta-kills you. In fact, here's the button. What does this do? It's going to give us a, a pan. I guess we didn't need to remember that button anymore. I'm going to pan down to that button which unpresses. And I'll be honest... This Let's Play is not blind because I've, you know, I've played this game before and I took damage. But I don't remember what these do. I I feel like... Okay, I need to stop doing that. I feel like they involve something... Something with, the, like, the iron upgrade or, this the like, the metal Pac-Man upgrade. But I feel like that's way off base. Because there's nothing that that would interact with. And I'm hoping it gives us a trail. Oh, good, it does. I would hate to have to do that again. What is this? I saw an apple up there. Remember that? What does this actually do? Besides give us a slice of life. Why? Oh, wait. Where are we? Wait. 
Oh, did the button disappear? Oh, I think we've been here. Be yeah, this is where we were, but the button disappeared for some reason. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sh exactly sure what that did. Hello, beetle. Beetle. There's no sale today. I'm not buying your... I'm not <laughs> giving you a beetle. I was trying to make a, a Zelda reference there, but it didn't really come out come out right. Okay. We, we got an apple, which is what we needed. Uh, you know what? I, I, I bet. I bet that that whole purpose of that, that trail... That's something we'll deal with later. Of that trail was showing us where the apple was. So we could get a Galaga, which I mistakenly called Galaxias in the last episode. I apologize for that. I guess I'm just spoiled on Kirby. Okay, all of these are themed after their respective worlds, which means we get a little bit of a, a look-see into some of them. Oh, boy. Uh, Clyde. That's Clyde, right? I think it's Clyde. Uh, oh, you went the other way. I didn't have to get that power pellet. That's sad. I usually like saving those for the very last minute. Or or just as, as something to run to when I feel like I'm about to be cornered. Like now, actually. I believe I am. Okay, blue man ran away. Good. Happy, happy blue. Blue! Like now, like now. That's that's exactly why I'm cornered. Do not run toward oh, you jerk. Yeah, I'm kinda worried about my my state in this in this uh Pac-Man level. I am not doing well. Okay, he ran away. Run, I'm playing some dangerous games. Which is kind of the name of the game. I don't know where Clyde is. Oh, there he is. And he's fast. Uh, I'm going to use a warp. I'm going to use a warp. And go up. And I think I'm just going to take the other warp. Goodbye. Yeah, have fun. Have fun over there. Because I am not over there anymore. Hello, Clyde. You know what? I am not there anymore again. Enjoy that end lag. Have fun with it. I could probably just camp them out infinitely with those warps. Normally Pac-Man doesn't have doesn't really punish you for doing that, but now you get a ton of end lag. So if you can kind of trick them, in fact. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. I am not good at my life right now. Oh, he ran away. He didn't see me. Oh, this is stupid. This is stupid. This is so stupid. Why am I doing this? Oh. Oh, my word. How did I avoid him? How did I avoid him? And now it is me who is the victor. And I think that's it. I think that's it for this level. I think we just, yeah, we just got it. I always love leaving power pellets for the very last thing. Boom. It makes me feel powerless. Powerful, sorry. Makes me feel powerful and them seem powerless. Whoop! Die. Thankfully I had some invincibility there. That would have been a jerk move. And there's a life down there, which we probably don't even need. The best the best level in the game for farming lives is actually coming up. It's next world. Oh, that, that was close. One of the biggest dangers of doing those directional B-boings -boi -boi is that if you accidentally press hit A too early because it's a fast fall, it stops your horizontal momentum, and then you just go plummeting to your death right next to the B-doing you're trying to land on. Thank you for dying. You. You kind of have to do it right right before you land, like, like that. Okay, so we have some lives. I don't think we take fall damage. Yeah, we... Fall damage is exempted. Exempted? Exempt. When we... Oh. And then again. <laughs> Don't mind the noises I make. Those are... Those are just courtesy. Those are like the pal flourish. Right there. Uh, I don't like this jump. In fact, I... I do not like this jump at all. Okay, that that's better. That's better. That's something I can agree with. So we're getting all the secrets. Uh, honestly... I, I gave myself a disclaimer that I didn't want to 100% this, but I don't think I needed it. I really didn't. Nothing has seemed that out of my way. I, I was th I was thinking about some of the collectibles in um, one of the later worlds. I thought I saw a token there. That's why I paused. Which we, it may still show up. At, at that point, I'll be like, oh yeah, that is why I said it. But for now, I'm starting to doubt my own... My own judgment call there. I probably I might have been able to do 100%. Okay, this seems 
Simple. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Oh, that's not good. Ooh. 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 Oh. Close jumps make me turn into an owl, apparently. Apparently, repeated close jumps <laughs> make me turn into a, a super owl. <laughs> scary, man. This is terrifying. My, my hands are... My palms are sweaty. Are sweaty. Mom spaghetti. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. This is... This is kind of crazy. Uh... It's so hard because this shortens our jump. It shortens up our jump, so I have to use it just right or that happens. Whew. Okay, uh, let's use a, a dash, I think. And then... Ow. That hurt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, it's these. Oh, it's these. I hate these enemies. I said that last episode, but I, I do detest these enemies because you can't see what they're shooting. And how fast it's going. You can't dodge them. It just you randomly take damage. And now, I'm in trouble. I One more hit and I'm dead. And I don't remember when the last checkpoint I got was. And that doesn't count as a, a pack dot. So I'm no closer to my slice of life. Oh, uh, here. I'm just going to refresh it. And thank goodness. Speaking of which. There's our checkpoint. Okay, good. And it's good. I got that. Okay. Five more. Yes. I'm no longer in death range. This is kind of cool. This is like a, a, a real 3D pack maze that there's platforming. That's kind of cool. It It's kind of... Oh, there's so many of them. There are so many of them. It's kind of weird because we can kind of, like, cheat. But it's also weird that we had a Galaga in this level and yet we're not, like... And yet, and yet we're doing this kind of twice. We're doing two levels. But at least this is completely optional. I don't know where the ghost went. I think I might just leave. I'll, did we 100% this level? I totally think we did. Oh, the posse. Oh, the posse. Oh, get out of the posse. Leave the posse. Goodbye. End of the level. New high score, which I think is 100%. Maybe. I'm not sure. I feel like there might be some things we missed in the beginning of the level. All cherries, all strawberries, all oranges, all apples, all melons, Galaga, and all pack dots. That's 100%. Yes. That's that's what I like to see. My favorite world. Mm, 100% in the, the crazy death pit bouncy level. Mm, that's that's my jam. Although we missed a token, but that's that doesn't count. That does not count as 100%. Before I enter the next level... I would like to take a quick breather and approach a topic that I would be unable to actually properly commentate if I was playing the game. And slapping post-commentary over me playing the level is definitely not the solution either because then I feel like I'm doing the level itself a disservice and I want to be showing these levels off and reacting to them. So between, the le between levels is definitely the proper place for this. Last episode, I highlighted Yasuhiro Noguchi, who has composed the music for this game, as well as Soul Calibur, Tekken 3, Tekken 4, and Sonic Generations. And this time, I would like to call your attention to another name on the dev team. That name is Vince Jolie, the lead art designer for the game. Vince Jolie has also worked on some very prominent titles. In fact, I recognized his name when I saw him credited. He has worked on... Metroid Prime 2, Metroid Prime 3, Donkey Kong Country Returns, Mario Kart 7, and Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, among many others. He has worked as an animator, animation lead, or art director for these games, or creative director in the case of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. And I found his website and found that Pac-Man, Pac-Man World 2, is mentioned. He gives a brief synopsis of his work on the game, uh, as well as some screenshots of Blinky's Frog, which he is responsible for. And I thought, wow, okay, I have something to to talk about in, in the third episode. But I wanted a bit more. So I decided to reach out to Vince. And as of this recording, <laughs> he and I have been in a conversation uh, spanning about a week and a half. Not only did I get the opportunity to express 
to one of the lead developers of the game, uh, how much this meant to me as both a piece of gaming history and also a part of my childhood, but I got the opportunity to pick his brain a little bit. And so today, I'm very surprised and ecstatic to bring you a, a Q&A of sorts. I asked him a few questions about his work on the game, and I'm able to share those here, so uh, let's, get, let's get on that. So first, I asked him if he could go into a bit more detail as to just just exactly what he was responsible for creating in Pac-Man World 2. Like I said, he does give a brief synopsis on his website, but I wanted some more specifics since that was a summary, and he, he certainly worked on other things. So his response was this. I created all the artwork for Pack Village and did the scripting for it. I did receive some help from design and engineering for parts of it. The levels I designed and created were Cannon Chaos, Packed Up Pond, and Blinky's Frog. The bare basics was my art, but a designer made the level. He also says on his website that he played a large role in creating the story and the storyboards for the game. He created 100% of Pac-Man's animations, model, and rig, and did concept art for and modeled several characters. Also on his website is one of the actual storyboards he made for the game, but I'm not going to show it because it's a storyboard for the end of the game, and while I'm not emphasizing the story too much, I would like to save the end of the game for, well, the end of the game. I then asked him about Pack Village in particular, saying, The design of Pack Village is rather unique. It's essentially a tutorial or playground level that doubles as a hub for the bonus content of the game. The fact that you can leave it immediately always stood out to me as a very masterful way of allowing experienced players to skip the tutorial. I guess my question is this. In the levels that you designed, what emotional response did you wish to evoke in the player? In other words, what did you aim for when you made these levels? I'm glad you liked the feel of it. It really was intended to blend or hide the tutorial in a usable space. It feels like home while you learn the controls. The intended feeling for the space, including the other spaces, was to make a place that felt inviting and fun to explore through a solid player package mixed with interesting items and platform challenges. In short, these first levels were intended to be rewarding with many items, being fairly safe to play to get the player comfortable with the controls. And I can definitely see that. I, I wanted to save this topic for this episode because I knew that there was such a stark contrast between the end of the first world and the beginning of the second. The difficulty takes a dramatic spike upward, and I wanted to be able to show that off when talking about Vince Jolie's work to show just how good of a tutorial world the first world is. It's night and day, honestly. And it's because of that. It's because it's supposed to be a tutorial world. And it does a fantastic job at getting people used to the gravity of the game, to uh, be able to platform well. It doesn't necessarily pull its punches, but it gives you very few punches to work with. And they're very isolated. You don't have to deal with enemies and bottomless pits until the very end of the world. You tackle challenges in a one-at-a-time at one manner. I especially like the, the aesthetic of the two worlds. You'd never feel like you're necessarily robbed of a good quote-unquote grass world, because the very next world is essentially the first world, but difficult. It's the same sort of locale. You're not getting hills, but you're still getting that timberland, uh, mild region that is just upped in difficulty. Now, this was my last uh, question, but it wasn't his last answer, and I'll explain that in a minute. I asked him, finally, what was your takeaway from this game? Did any of your work in Metroid Prime 2 or 3, or any other project for that matter, pull inspiration from Pac-Man World 2? As far as what influences this game had made for me in subsequent titles, I would say that it played a role in some of the decisions I made for the Donkey Kong games that I worked on, but not really for the Metroid games, since I was focused strictly on animation for them. Which, if you remember last episode, I, I made a point about how much this feels like Donkey Kong. And while he didn't work on Donkey Kong Country Returns until almost a decade after his, he worked on this game, I can see in sort of a backward fashion, since he was the art director for Returns, how I would make this connection. In a weird way, these games strike the same chord with me. He concluded by saying that this was a fun game to work on, fairly small team with very talented folks, and to that I wholeheartedly agree. However, this was not my last correspondence with Vince. 
And in fact, as of this recording, our conversation is still going. After I released the very first episode of the series, uh, he responded to my complaints about the camera controls, saying, you're right about the camera. Our camera engineer was banging his head on the wall trying to get it to work well for so many corner cases, which <laughs> I found funny considering that corners is what the camera typically struggles with. But I'm sure that pun was not intended. In all fairness to him, many of our levels weren't built to be very camera friendly. And also in fairness, and I didn't, I didn't give my complaint full, full credence, uh, because th the concept of a 3D camera had only existed for six years, actually under six years, if you consider that uh, Super Mario 64 debuted this system. It came in out in '96. This game was released in 2002 and it most shortly began development in 2001 or earlier. So five or six years, that's not nearly enough time to, to perfect such a, a new and revolutionary system as this. So to be completely fair, while it is a flaw of the game, I don't hold it against the game, if that makes sense. So <laughs> yeah, I was able to pick the brain of the lead art designer for this game. And <laughs> Never did I envision when making this channel that I would reach a point where I was getting a developer response of the game that I was Let's Playing. It just never crossed my mind, and I'm so glad that I decided to reach out to Vince on a whim. I, I didn't know where it would take me, and it took me, I think, to a good place. And thank you, Vince. Thank you, Vince, for, for responding and allowing me to, to ask you these questions. And... If you have any other input as I play through this game, because I, I know you watched the first episode, uh, then feel free to email me and, and I can share it. If you have any cool tidbits about the development process of this game, I would love to hear them and I would love to share them with my audience. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Okay, we're 22 minutes into the episode and uh, it might be a bad idea for me to play the next level, but... I think if it ends up making this episode a bit long, that's okay. I know what I'm talking about next episode, and we also have a boss, so next episode will be shorter. <sighs> you know what? Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm going to go into the next level and deal with the consequences. Tree Wood Forest. You ask how we could make this more difficult with death pits everywhere? Why not add saws? Naturally occurring saws in nature. They just grow from trees now. That's that's how that's how it works. Trees are so efficient that once they reach a certain age, they just they grow saw blades. They develop saw blades. It's like tree puberty, except that puberty ends in death. <laughs> Speaking of which, oh, <sighs> me riding the high from being able to talk to the developers of one of my childhood games probably caused that. I'll, I'll just blame. In in fact, no, I, I won't blame Vince Jolie for that. That that was such a cool opportunity that I'm probably gonna be a bit sloppy in this level. Whew. Okay, already I've gotten hit by the, the saw blades twice, and I've almost died more times than I have fingers, which I lost a few fingers doing this, so it's kind of hard to count. Grab these dots for no reason, and no more whammies, no more secrets, let's go. You know, seeing this world, I wonder if this is where I got my love for, uh, it sounds weird, where I got my love for trees, but no, like, if, if any of you watched the, ooh, I started to fall there, if any of you watched, uh, any of the Terraria, the Terraria content I've produced, you, you know that I, for some reason, have this weird, there's some words that I'd love to describe this with, but they, I'm not gonna utter those on the channel, this weird infatuation, that's a good word, with building big trees in Terraria, we had this gigantic world that I must have spent collectively, because I actually made two trees. I made one and then I upgraded it. I must have made, I don't know, I, I must have spent like seven hours making this giant tree house. That was literally a tree and a house. And I wonder if this is the game that caused that, because I can't think of any other game that has these cool tree aesthetics, these giant trees. Might have been this. Got our token. And... Launches us back to where we, kind of where we were. Whew, these, this makes my, my, my mother growing up was, 
I, I would make it a point, just be mean. Uh, she, she always hated... Oh. She always hated big jumps in video games. It just made her stomach go get a bit uh, nauseous, like motion sick. I jumped through that. Ow. And I jumped on that. Uh, and, and I would always... Whenever I played this area, I was like, hey, mom, look. <laughs> just show her and, and then watch as, as her face turns a bit green. Okay. Let's carefully get these strawberries. Okay, come on. Got them. All strawberries collected. Sweet. Camera, can you change for me? I'd love to have the camera just completely horizontal right now. Oh, thank you, GameCube controller, for having a very good control stick. Don't, don't you do that. You, uh, d of course, I, of course, I miss. He misses that attack, and then he hits the the. I'm going to hug you with my eyes attack. What a wonderful attack. Clearly, one in in Hannibal's book of strategy. There we go. I, I knew it, at some point it transitioned to horizontal. Oh. <sighs> okay. Okay. All oranges collected. Making a regular fruit salad. Oh, I, I managed to dodge the saw blade. And we're running, we're running, we're running, we're running. We're, we're jumping, we're jumping, we're jumping, we're jumping, we're climbing up. Got the melon. It's not all the melons. We're, we're scaling this. S Namco. You know... There's a Sawblade world in, speaking of which, speaking of Donkey Kong Country, uh, inspired, or being inspired by this game, like, uh, with Vince's, Vince Jolie's inspiration of this game that he, he implemented in, uh, in Donkey Kong Country Returns and Tropical Freeze, this level is very reminiscent to a level that appears in, <laughs> appears in Donkey Kong Country 2, I need to run, I need to run, I need to run, I need to run, where there are Sawblades in their trees. And it, it's kind of weird because I kind of wonder if Nintendo saw this and thought, okay, this is kind of not blatant because that makes it sound like it's bad, but we we get your inspiration because Namco and, and Nintendo did not have the the greatest relationship preceding this game. This was kind of this was kind of not the reformation, but this was the the, the reparation of of their relationship. And, and I mean now they're they're completely buddy buddy. That's the way I need to go. Nintendo and and uh, Namco are completely buddy buddy. I mean, just look at who makes Smash Brothers, and and you'll know. I mm, okay. I think that's where a Galaga is, but there's a checkpoint. There's a way to go over there, and there's a way to go over here. I'm going to go here because I think I can return, but I'm not sure. Okay, I killed him. I killed him. That was not one of the big ones. There's another checkpoint. I, I'm not sure which way I'm supposed to go. In fact, I'm wondering if this is a split path because I can't return that way. There's no way. I guess I'll just continue on. I think this is the. I think I need to be dash. Yeah. Okay, that was right. Uh, camera. Oh, you know what? I see. No, I can't return that way. Yeah, I am not sure. I can okay, I can return that way. Yes, 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 yes. We were just down there. So I can return. That's good. This is kind of weird. If a forked path in a I don't remember this. I mean, I, I vaguely remember this, but I don't like remember remember this. It's just something where I thought I think, "Oh yeah, there there were many places to go in this game." Oh goodness, I hate this. There's no button for me to hang down. I just kind of have to Oh, oh, oh. I just kind of have to <laughs> run off and, and, and have hope. Have have prayers and hope. And of course I have to do it again. Wonderful. Oh, no, that's... <laughs> I hope that your hands are sweating because mine... I am, I'm constantly, whenever I'm doing this, I'm, I'm wiping my hands on my pants. Uh, let's see, let's jump up. I don't know. There is something up here. Okay. But I don't know what, and this is the perfect place to hide some stuff, which they did not. I appreciate that. Is there, an, there is an enemy. He's dead. And there's a Galaga! There's a second- there is a Galaga in every level. I think I was wrong about that. There is one in every level except for bosses. Hopefully this level won't be too long because of it. 
Otherwise, I might have to start cutting out the Galagas because this level doesn't look much different from the other one. Maybe it's just because of the 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 tree maze aesthetic, but it doesn't look too different. Ooh. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ooh, no, thank you. Okay, there's only one warp this time. That that is different. In fact, I think this area is a little bit a little bit shorter or not shorter bits. Yeah, it, this is noticeably smaller. Okay, eat you because that'll actually extend my invincibility there. Whoop! Oh, that's the worst thing. You go through one of the warps, unlike normal Pac-Man, where you, you know what's on the other side of the warp. But this one, you're blind. I'm, I'm dead. There's nothing I can do there. Okay, trying again. This one is... There's a noticeable upscale in difficulty here. Okay, I can see them all. This is not blind anymore. I'm going to avoid that for the time being. Try to get some of these center ones. All of the ghosts took the warp, it looks like, so I am totally free to... Oh, man, I went the wrong way. I thought there was another warp. Okay, well, I'm forced to do that. But thankfully, it looks like I'm I'm doing all right. I, I think I'm doing fine. Kind of. I could be doing better, and I might die here. Uh, perfect! Yes! Yes! Uh, chain these, chain these, chain these. I think that's, I think that's all I need. Just get all these, grab that, grab these, and then the rest are in the corner. In fact, I just need to go this way to extend, and I, I did it. I did it. I got 200 bonus points to boot. That's how you do it! That is using the game's mechanics against itself, and <laughs> I'm hoping that these Galagas don't make the episodes too long. I mean, I don't have to get them. I, I really don't, but it's one of those things, unlike a cherry, it feels like you should get it. Uh, let's just do that. There's a life over there. I'm not sure if I want it. Uh, man, I want to go back. I don't think... Uh, oh, I can go back. Um, I can get... I need to be careful that I don't just die. Yeah. Oh, no! That is not what I thought would kill me. That is not what I thought would kill me. I thought that I was going to die from the fall there. But it, it wasn't the fall that killed me or the sudden stop. It was the saw blade at the end. That's... I didn't mean to do that. And that stuff above us, those... Oh, wait. No, no, no. Yeah, there was this checkpoint. Yeah, this is... This is odd to me. Oh, goodness. We just got a checkpoint, so... What can go wrong? The answer is nothing. Nothing went wrong. The answer is I am a beast. I'm a beast man. Uh, actually... Oh, okay. So that sends us back. That sends us back, and so this is an optional way to go. And I walked into the saw blade, and once again, one hit will kill me. Perfect. And I hope that this isn't what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we might have to climb with a saw blade chasing us. I hope not. At least not until I get 30 more dots. Oh. Got it. The noise is for me. It's weird that I said this is my favorite world when this one is obviously driving me insane. Oh, that's the egg. Whoa. Hmm. Okay, they wouldn't add two ends to a level, would they? I don't... I think the answer to that is no. Uh, but I need to be careful that I don't die. Because that is a very real possibility. I need to be doing... I either rev roll off that way and land on it, which is the stupid way, or I, I just be bounce there, but I have to be precise. I am going to do that. <laughs> oh, I am a bad, bad person. Okay, this will take us back. And the problem is with this, with this route, is I have to go back. All this progress you're seeing, I have to backtrack. I have to undo this process. Progress. I don't know where I'm going. Where am I going? A new checkpoint. Where? Oh, this is where we were. Oh. Oh, this level is huge, by the way. I cannot stress that enough. And I don't know what. Okay. Well, apparently, this is now happening. 
Wait, have we been here? I feel like this might be a long episode just because of how expansive. Oh no! Wait, have we... Have we been here, been here? We've been here, been here! Oh no! This is bad. I don't know why it sent us back there. But it did. Okay, so that's a... Uh, that is my bad. So I guess I'll meet you back at the end. Almost to the top. There's very little that can go wrong now. This is the last obstacle for me. This saw blade. If I don't die, which I actually didn't need to take. Snap. Uh, okay, this is the last obstacle for me. If I don't be stupid, I'm fine. I think I'm fine. I am good. Look how far we come. This level is huge. I don't remember Pac-Man World 2 having levels this big. And what a start. What a start to like the actual game of Pac-Man World 2 beyond the the tutorial levels beyond the first world. This is what we're looking for. This is what makes this game great. That that first world, that that was just the setup. As great as it was with the great music and being fan, being very solid as a tutorial will, world, this is where the game takes off its kid gloves and says, "Hey, notice me. I am a good platformer." And I say, "Yes, you're right." And I also say, "New high score. That's the end of the episode." Whoo! I'm gonna wipe off my. I'm gonna save, but I'm also going to wipe off my palms, and hopefully clean my GameCube controller before I record next episode because that is it. Let's see how we did. So far, so good. Nice. I don't think we got all the pack dots though. Yeah, that that would be a bit crazy. 194 and a lot of them being in awkward paths with enemies. Yeah, no thanks. Thank you so much for watching. N next episode. We jump into Butane Pain. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I would like to thank Vince for, for making this episode something special. Something that's never been done in the history of this channel. So, thank you, Vince. I It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for answering my questions. And next time in Pal Plays, Pac-Man World 2, we're going into Butane Pain and finishing out World 2. And you can see that snow is ahead of us. So look forward to that. See you guys then. Oh yeah, I release episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah. <laughs>